As PC gamers, we can all agree we want one thing, our games to run as smooth as possible. Now I've made a hell of a lot of setting videos on this channel so you guys know that I am craving FPS all the time in every game I play, but today I'm going to show you guys what little tweaks you can do to your windows in order to make games run a little bit smoother and overall look better. But before we jump into it, today's video is sponsored by Opera GX. Two of my pet peeves with normal internet browsers is that they are system resource hogs and they don't come equipped with enough features. Opera GX intends to fix that. One of the awesome features that Opera GX has is GX Control. It allows you to set a network limiter in which you can choose your upload and download bandwidth, a RAM limiter, a CPU limiter in here as well. You can really dial in how much you want the application to use while you're gaming. We've got YouTube, Twitch, and Reddit all running in Opera GX, as well as the same running in Google Chrome. Google Chrome just simply uses more memory, especially when I've got the Opera GX set up with that RAM limiter. The network limiter is great to set exactly what bandwidth you want to allow Opera GX to use while you're gaming. So for example, while I'm watching a 1080p Twitch stream on my second monitor while gaming, I can turn on the network limiter and come in here and I can set it to the lowest HD video recommended bandwidth. And therefore my download gets limited, but I can still watch my stream without using up resources. I also hate not having my most used websites and services available from the browser. I can click Twitch. I'm already logged in and I can see all the channels that are online. Let's have a look at Shroud and it will take me to his channel. I've even got my Spotify account linked to the player. So when I'm browsing the web, I can also listen to my favorite songs. Along with the Twitch integration, you've got access to other great integrations like Facebook Messenger and Discord. So while I'm browsing the web, watching my favorite streamers like Dr. Lupo on YouTube, I can come over here and I can very quickly go to my Facebook Messenger. Obviously can't show you the contents of this, but I can also open up my Discord, go in my Discord server, talk to friends and such. And uh, yeah, it's uh, pretty cool. Opera GX is also available on mobile, so be sure to download it on your phone too. There's a link in the description to download Opera GX, so head down there, get it downloaded, and start feeling the power. So the first tweak today is going to be focused on full screen optimizations, specifically how we disable them. Uh, full screen optimizations were introduced as part of Windows 10 as uh, a nice medium between uh, an exclusive full screen setting for a game and a borderless window. So what were the advantage of, of the two? Well, I always recommend to go for exclusive full screen because it means that when you've got the game open and it's your main thing on your screen, you're not having anything composite in the background and you get the best latency possible, uh, typically. Whereas running it in borderless is good for if you're someone who's doing potentially a lot of alt tabbing, you know, when you alt tab out the game and it goes black typically for a little bit and then kind of opens up your desktop. If you're someone who's trying to multitask, like you're a streamer or something like that, then maybe you'll want to alt tab and therefore borderless window might be something you like. Full screen optimizations were introduced to basically say, well, here's a happy medium of the two uh, and it's some technology that's working in the background to achieve low latency whilst still being able to get the alt tabbing. But for people who are performance focused gamers, we want to disable that setting so we can get our exclusive full screen. So how do we do that? Well, I'll quickly show you. First of all, have a game open, typically the game you want to be playing. So I've got Battlefield 4 open at the moment, and then I'm going to do Control Alt Delete uh, and we'll open up my task manager. Uh, and then from the task manager, uh, we can go in here. We can go to the details tab. We look for the application that's running for me. It's bf4.exe. Uh, I can go to open file location and it will open up the specific area where the exe that is running is held on my computer. Right click it, go to properties and then from this properties menu go to compatibility and then you'll see a box here called disable full screen optimizations. We're going to click that. Then, we're not done yet, another thing you need to do is to ch click this change uh, high DPI settings. Click the override high DPI scaling behavior and ensure that the scaling is performed by the application. There's been a lot of questions asked, specifically to Windows, about what this setting truly does in uh, combination with the disabled full screen optimizations. And essentially the answer that we get back is that Windows just says, let the game do its thing. Let the game have control. So we're going to do that. We've got this ticked application. OK, we've got disabled full screen optimizations ticked. Click apply, click OK, and then you just simply need to close out the game that you're running reopen it and you'll have full screen optimizations disabled giving you that sweet sweet low latency next let's talk about startup applications when you turn on your pc you'll typically have a lot of software and uh, like tasks that will occur in the background a lot of which will continue running whilst your pc's on you might not even realize they're there but they're all using up system resources that could be used 
on your game. This is especially important if you're running on a low RAM system, maybe something like a laptop. Weaker systems are really going to feel this. But even, you know, your big, well put together PC, you know, it's still going to have an effect. So we're going to disable some startup applications that we don't need running. What you're going to do is, whilst in your task manager that we just happened to have open before, uh, you're going to click the startup tab. Then in here, you'll be listed with a big list of things that can open when your PC starts. And you want to scroll down here and be very meticulous and decide what do I want to have running and what do I not. So things that I've disabled are essentially a lot of automatic updaters, things that I've got, a, I've got my, my WhatsApp application, Microsoft Teams, um, Spotify was opening up and running in the background when I started, Epic Games Launcher was running, uh, and it, this was all running in the background, you might not even realise that this starts, but this is all stuff that I, I, need, I can run when I want it, I don't need it running when I start up my system. For things that I kept running, I've got things like Logitech G Hub, which controls my mouse, um, my Go XLR stuff, which is my monitor, which my um, my audio stuff. Sorry, I've got all that running. But by disabling all of these other kind of bloated applications, my system is running uh, with far less resources being devoted to other things, and it means that my games get all the resources they need. So startup applications are a really simple thing that you can disable and get some nice resources that your games will really need. Now, every single component in your PC requires a driver to run. Uh, and it's very likely that you have a lot of components that are not up to date with the latest drivers that they need. I'm expecting that you've got your graphics drivers up to date and potentially your BIOS is up to date and, and things like that. But there's a lot of other things like network card or Wi-Fi, uh, audio, your general chipset drivers for, for your CPU. There's, there's a lot of stuff that if you're not looking for it and actively thinking about it, you won't have updated them. So we're going to make sure we've got our drivers up to date so we're getting the best performance possible. The way we're going to do that is using a very, very well-respected application called Snappy Driver Installer or SDI Origin. Uh, just search it on Google. You can find the download for it and get it downloaded. It will download in a zip file, or at least it did for me. Uh, and then you need to extract that zip file. Uh, let me just, shh, just reveal my icons for a second so you can just see that. Um, and within this uh, folder, you're likely going to want to run the x64 version of the exe. When it opens up, you'll be greeted with a screen that will ask you whether you want to download every driver, which is probably not the best idea because it's going to download things you don't need. I would recommend that you select the bottom option, which basically will have a look through your PC, decide what things it needs to download. I've just done that now, and you can see there are 53 driver packs available um, for things like my... Uh, my Ethernet connection, my uh, Intel 300 series chipset, um, the management engine, there's things here that I don't even really know too much about, but the drivers are out of date. So I can go through here, I can tick all of these, uh, and then I can start the download, and we can get them all installed. And this will mean that you're up to date, uh, and there's not going to be any old drivers holding your system back. Now, I really couldn't do a tweaks video without talking about the Windows Power Plan, which is uh, a bit of a misconstrued topic. A lot of people chuck around a lot of different opinions on what you should select as a power plan. And hopefully today I can give you a pretty definitive answer based on research from different videos of well reputable people that I know of, uh, as well as people on Reddit that I know know what they're talking about and so I can pass that information on to you guys with a fairly simple answer. So what we need to do to edit this is go down to your search bar, type in power and click choose a power plan. Now you can see I have got selected the high performance power plan. If you have never touched the power plan, you will have the balanced power plan selected. Um, honestly, either of these work pretty well, but I would always recommend to go with the high performance power plan. What this is basically doing is it is reducing the latency uh, of your, your your PC changing its state uh, for different loads that, that, that it's required for. So if you get into a certain part of a game, for example, and something occurs which requires a bit more drive onto certain components uh, into your CPU, you know, requires that clock to just boost a little bit quicker, having the high performance selected here will ensure that you're, you, you've not got any of the latency that's affecting that. If you are, however, on a laptop, uh, I would recommend you definitely stick this on balance because it will it will not affect performance much at all and it will 
heavily help battery life uh, in the long run. So that's the only time I would recommend you go balanced. Otherwise, for everyone else, go with the high performance power plan. Now, I know a lot of people out there will say, well, why not go for the ultimate performance? I've also got some other ones here, but the ultimate performance provides the ultimate performance on higher end PCs. Well, interestingly, uh, if I come in here and click change advanced power settings, uh, and then I come back and I go to the ultimate performance and do the same thing. Oh, it won't let me do it. Um, but you can select them both in here, uh, ultimate performance and high performance. If you come in and you play around with all of these actual settings in here, you'll realize there is no difference whatsoever. Uh, Windows have put out that the only reason that the ultimate performance plan actually exists is for PCs working as servers, or workstations, which for us gamers is not the case. Uh, so what you should be selecting is high performance here, and that's just your one quick, simple way of solving this. You can also go out there and look at some tweakers online. They might release their own power plans that might go really in depth. If you wanna go trust them, then go for it. But if you want something that's just gonna be stable, it's gonna work well, and it's simple and you can always get back to it, high performance is never gonna fail you. It's gonna give you good latency. Uh, yeah, and it's simple. The penultimate tweak I'm going to talk about today is not really something that's going to boost FPS or boost performance too much, but it's going to make your games look a hell of a lot better overall. And I've talked about this in previous videos a little bit, but I wanted to cover it here as well. And that is uh, improving the colors uh, of your games, because a lot of the time, depending on what your monitor is, you might not be getting the best colors or the most vibrant colors that you can get from your game, which uh, in certain games like uh, CSGO and Valorant and, and Warzone and games like that, which have slightly more muted colors in certain areas, having the, the boosted colors can really actually improve your game. So the way we can do that is very simple, and a lot of people don't know about this, but if you've got an NVIDIA card, just simply right-click and go to NVIDIA Control Panel. If you've got an AMD card, unfortunately, there, there might be another way of doing this. You're going to have to go research that for yourselves. But after you've opened up the NVIDIA Control Panel, uh, we're going to avoid the Manage 3D Settings area because this is talked about all the time, and really, it doesn't affect things too much. It's not going to give you massive performance boosts. Don't try the BS creators out there telling you that this is going to fix all your problems because it's not. But anyway, we're going to come to adjust desktop color settings. In here, uh, you're going to have two options. You're going to have the, uh, sorry, you might not have two options. I've got two options because I've got two monitors. Uh, but when you come down here, you've got the digital vibrance setting, which you can turn up and down. And as you can see, it actually changes how much color we have. I would recommend. I'm currently at 50%, but I would recommend that if you're playing some games with muted colors, bring this up to 60%, click apply, and you're gonna get instantly improved colors for your games, and it really does make a difference. You might not even need an extra 10, you might only need 55, that might be good enough. Try, try and see what works out for you. Uh, that's what worked out for me, having it at around 60 or so for a long time. The only reason I'm back at 50 now is because I've been doing some color sensitive editing work for these kind of videos for my thumbnails and stuff. But if I was purely gaming, I would definitely have that on 60% or so. Go try it out. I'm going to be very, very cheeky for this final tweak because it's not really a tweak whatsoever. But I wanted to add it in. That's why we've got six tweaks rather than five in this video. And that is if you've gone through everything that I've talked about today and you've still got problems and you just feel like, you know what, my system is just really sluggish at the moment. It just feels bogged down and I can't really figure out what to do with it. Reinstall Windows. I've reinstalled Windows um, probably once a year now for the past uh, five or so years on this system. And honestly, every time I reinstall Windows, it's like a breath of fresh air. A lot of people are very scared of doing it or they can't be bothered, but resetting your Windows back to that factory settings is a surefire way of getting your system de-bloated and running at its optimum performance based on the hardware you've got. So how do you do it? Well, uh, if you just search uh, clean install of Windows, uh, you'll come to this page, uh, or if you go through Google, and this shows you how you can download a tool which essentially downloads the latest version of Windows. Uh, you can then put that onto uh, either a CD or a USB stick. You just plug that into your system and then you run from that USB stick the Windows install tool and you reinstall Windows onto the, the main hard drive. You basically wipe your main hard drive and it will reinstall Windows onto it. Now, uh, if you've got anything on the load of other hard drives, that should be fine. So I've got like six hard drives, my other five hard drives they won't be affected. But if there's anything important on your main hard drive, be sure to get that off the main hard drive, copy it somewhere. Um, but honestly, 
for most of us gamers, it really doesn't matter. Games themselves, you can re-download them. It's going to be quicker than trying to move them back and forth between hard drives. Uh, the settings for games, a lot of that's stored in the cloud now anyway, saves as well. So you're really not losing out on much if you're just a pure gamer. So I would highly recommend, potentially even before bothering with any other tweaks, just get Windows reinstalled, go back to the start, and make sure that as you move forward, you keep your Windows system as de-bloated as possible, and make sure you're using the tweaks that I've recommended in this video. Anyway, guys, thanks very much for watching the video. If these tweaks have been helpful, then be sure to like the video down below and subscribe for more videos coming very soon. Uh, make sure you download Opera GX. The link is in the description. Uh, it's a browser that's built by gamers for gamers and i really think that there is no better browsers could be using uh, right now so yeah thanks for watching i'll catch you guys in my next video bye bye